Okay, now that you have seen what list generic classes are, and we've walked through how to use them, let us go ahead and revisit the Bouncing X application that we wrote a couple of videos back. So this is it. If you followed along, you should have the exact same thing. And Logan, if we run it real quick, let's show them what we've got. We've got two different Xs that bounce around the screen. But these two different Xs are created and handled manually, if you will. Let's go ahead and close out of that real quick, Logan. Let me show them what I'm talking about. All right, so coming back over here into Visual Studio, here's what I mean by they're being done manually. Basically, we are addressing both of these objects by their specific identifier each during the loop and telling them to update. But as we've discussed in the last video, this is a problem if we wanted to be able to dynamically add boxes on the fly and have those boxes update. And this is where lists come in. So in this video, there are several different things that Logan's going to do, but we're going to start out by adding this list system into it. Right. We'll first add our list so we can start changing things over to use the list. So to define this list we're going to use, I'm actually going to jump back into the class program before the main method. So I'll make this list outside of any of the specific methods, just because later I want to use another method for other reasons. And you need that method to be able to see the list. Right. I'm going to make this list uh, static. So, no, I can spell static. Make this list static so that we can use it from inside of our static methods. So this is going to be a static list list is going to be typed as a box so we're going to hold boxes in this list and I'm going to call it boxes just so that it makes sense boxes contains boxes okay so we've got our list defined I'm going to put off initializing it until we're inside of main just I guess you could say preference here so I'm going to jump into the uh, main method for a program where I will say that uh, boxes is equal to a new list of box and then a parentheses because we're creating a list and after this point from here on out inside of main we now have the boxes list created and ready to use okay so with the boxes list let's change around our code we'll keep these first two x's for a while and we'll just slowly migrate these over to the new list system so what i'll do after each of these boxes have been created i'll jump down one line and add each box to the list. So we'll take boxes, dot add, and we'll add in, in this case, the variable is box. And for the second one, it was box two. So I'm just going to copy this line, boxes dot add, and we'll add in our second box. We'll add in box two. So after we get to this point, our boxes list should now contain both X's. And this leads us down into the loop where we can start having the loop um, go about and properly or dynamically or smartly go through the list and update only what needs to be updated. So I'll take all of this out, even though I'm technically going to add some of it back here in a second, the update and draw, but we'll just re rewrite the section so that it's clear. In order to iterate through the loop, I'm going to use a for each, or iterate through the list. For, I'll use a for each just because that's um, very straightforward in its action. So I'll make a for each that is going to pull out box objects called box out of the boxes list. So we have our loop. Though we will have a problem with the naming of this variable box, if I tried to build right now, this is an error because box as a variable has already been defined up here. I do want to use the name box inside of the for each because I like addressing each box as a box. So what I'll do is I'll change this version to box one. Since in the end, I'm actually going to be removing this block of code altogether or at least changing it. So I'll change these as these are now viewed as the temporary ones. This is the new method we're moving into. So that resolves the naming conflict. I can now use box as the variable name for our for each. Now inside of the for each loop, we can simply address the boxes one by one using the box variable. So I'll do box dot update and box dot draw. Now I have updating, though it's we only have to type out the code for one box, but thanks to the for each, this gets applied to all boxes. And at this point, we should be able to test it out. We should have the same visual effect, but now using a list to handle updating and drawing. So let's run, and there we go, same visual effect. Looks good. And the nice thing now is that, um, let me change the code around to make it a little bit more modular so we can start to see the power of using the list in this method. Let me actually change box one to uh, new box. As a matter of fact, and I'm going to undo that, 
just thinking about it, I'm going to hit F2 so that I can refactor this. And we'll use uh, refactoring to go in and automatically rename all of it. So we want to rename box1 to new box. There. And I'm going to completely erase my other setup, for now anyway. So we have new box, which is the red X. Now I'm going to copy this entire block of code. Well, actually, I'm going to copy all of the, the entire block of code minus the definition of new box. Once we've defined new box, we can't define it again. So we've got all of this code to make the first red X, and then all of this code to make the second one, which I'm going to set this one back to green and maybe set it to be faster. So now, let's run. We should have the same effect. But here's where I was talking about where things finally get a little easier. Now, for every box we add, we can just paste in a new block of code, change only things that are relevant. For example, we could change the color to blue now. So aside from copying, only changing one thing, and let me also change the velocity. It is working, but it's just overdrawing itself. So there we now we have three boxes. And no matter how many boxes we add, we never have to mess with this loop ever again. This for each loop handles all of the boxes. So, well, this is already, you could say, twice as powerful now as there's only half as much code to add for each box. This is still getting cumbersome. This is still a rather large block of code to have to deal with for every single X. So let me come up with a setup that would make it easier to add a lot of Xs. What I want to do now is make a method that will add an X at a random location on the screen and give it a random velocity. So the only thing left for me to specify is the color. And so to do this, I'm going to jump out of our main method and make a method called addRandomBox. So it will be static so that we can call it from main. It will be void because we don't need to return anything. And I'm going to call it add random box, where everything is random except for the color. So I'm going to take in a console color, a console, da, 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 color, call color as a parameter. Now inside random, uh, add random box, we need to do a few things. As a matter of fact, the first thing we need is we need a random object. So I'm going to use random in order to actually generate the random position. So I'm going to jump back up to the very beginning where we had defined the list, and I'm going to define a random object as well. This will be a uh, static random called random. And just like any other object, just like the list even, the random has to be created before we can use it. So I'll say something like random equals new random. And this allows us a random object that we can use for the add random box. So now we can spend the rest of our time focusing on in the inside of this method. So what is the first thing we need to do when adding a box? Well, we need a box variable so that we can do all of our setup. So I'm going to define a box variable called box. We're going to set box to be equal to a new box. And even some of this I could actually copy from what we were using. I just want to retype it out to make it as clear as possible. So we've made a new box. Now we need to set up a few things about the box. The first thing we already know, we already know what the box's color is, so I'm going to go ahead and set that. So box.color equals the color parameter. Now, the other two things are random. The, those two other two things are going to be its position on screen and its velocity. Um, I'll begin with uh, velocity first. We'll set up the, uh, the box's velocity. is of course, going to be a new point. Now, the values, the x and y for this point, are going to be random. So I'm going to call upon random.next, and I need to feed it a range. So let's focus on x first. x is going to be random dot next now I want a specified range since random with only a range is going to be zero up and two not including that uh, range we feed it I don't want to have a random a velocity of zero in either way because zero means not moving in this case I want there to be at least some movement so I'm going to specify one as our lower range and then for our max value I'll do four and what this will actually do is since four is uh, exclusive that means we have a possible range of 1, 2, or 3 are the possible velocities we could get. Now, all of that should take care of x, so we can move on to the uh, y component. For y, as a matter of fact, I think I have too many parentheses. There we go. Wipe one of those out. For y, I'll copy the random code and simply paste it in for y. So we have 1 through 3 that x could be and 1 through 3 that y could be. And that should take care of giving us a random velocity. Now we need to look at random position. So we can begin with box.position is equal to, position is also a point, so a new point. 
Now, for a random position, what does that mean? That means a random location that is on screen. So I'm going to be using random again, but for the range, I'm going to be using our console's window width and our console's window height. That will give us the full range of the visible screen. So we can begin with a random dot next. I don't care if this one reaches zero because zero zero is a valid visible position at the top left of the screen. So I don't need to worry about specifying a lower bound or a min value. I'm simply going to specify a max value. And that max value, since this is X, is going to be console, well not console color, but console dot window width. So that will give us zero to whatever the uh, or whatever width is minus one because it's exclusive and not inclusive. So that should take care of the range for the x position. So I'll copy that block of code for the random, and we'll change the uh, y component to be window height instead of width. And so all of that should give us a random position that is on screen. And really, I think that takes care of everything we need in setting up the box itself. There's only one thing left to do, and that is to take this new box and add it into our list. So that is simply boxes.add. We'll add in the box. All right, that should take care of rend add random box. I'll build now to make sure that I haven't introduced any errors and everything is looking fine. So let's jump back up and test it. Let's, um, <clears throat> let's actually take out some of our boxes. As a matter of fact, I'll take out all but one. So if we build now, we have that one manually created box, which is the first uh, X. Now let's try out our add random box. We'll add random box for a console color of blue. So is this working? Not yet. Let's look at what could possibly be causing this to not work. We've got our color being set up. We've got our box being added into the boxes list. Let me think for just a second. We've got everything goes into here. Let me actually set a breakpoint on the uh, for each, just because I want to look at boxes for a second. We've got two boxes. The other one is blue, and its location. It has a valid velocity. It has a valid location. And I think what's happening is. In the previous lesson, we actually set this up so the boxes have a specific character. And there we go. That's actually what's missing. Let me stop the, uh, the process. That's the line that was missed. So I guess in the end, I should have just copied this whole block and reused it. Because what's happening here is down in this add random box, I never specify a character. So let me set the uh, boxes character to X, and then all should be well. All right? So now we build, and character is not a string, it's a character, so I have to use single quotes. And there we go, now we have our blue box being added as a random box. So now if we want a lot more of these random boxes, it's a lot easier. If I copy and paste this line several times, hey, look at that. Now we've got a lot of randomly positioned and moving boxes. But things actually get even more interesting than this. Let's take this back a few. Let me just create three boxes and let me give them all different colors. So we have a nice random assortment going. Let's have things like a uh, red, yellow, and white set of boxes. So that looks pretty interesting. We've got a few boxes. Now let's say we suddenly decided that we want five times as many red, yellow, and white boxes. Well, let's actually start putting box creation into a loop. I'll make a simple for loop where we have maybe something like zero, so i equals zero, two i is less than five. So we have five boxes, and then increment i for every iteration of the loop. So there we go. No more than three lines of add random box code, but we simply use a loop, and now we have a lot of boxes. Very nice. So now the creation of boxes has become highly automated. So a simple control structure gives us a screen filled with boxes. But what's cool is that since there's no specific right way to create a box, we can still create boxes however we want, we can keep this custom one. And I can actually show it off a little bit better by changing this one to blue. So we have a completely custom box. So everything was hand created. And it exists right there. Whereas we have this whole field of randomly created red, white, and yellow boxes. So this is where things get really powerful, where you have a very easy way to create many boxes and still manage them as far as updating and drawing goes. Very nice.
Okay, well, is that pretty much everything that you wanted to demonstrate here? I believe that's everything I wanted to put into this example. Okay, well, that is going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.